Bonnie Willis responded to Brian Steele's motion to disqualify lead prosecutors Love and Hilton. Doug Weinstein went on Phil Holloway's podcast and responded to what Fonnie says. No surprise, Fonnie Willis is also delusional just like Love and Glanville. She says the whole ex parte meeting was proper and she cites a case that then Doug Weinstein basically says doesn't apply whatsoever. Later on in this video, you'll see what Doug Weinstein says. Next Tuesday is going to be insane in court, so buckle up for that. Is it Fonnie or Fanny? I'm pretty sure it's Fonnie, right? I don't know. Hey, subscribe. Here we go. All right, so we got state's response to defense motion to disqualify lead prosecutors. So remember, I think it was Brian Steele filed a motion pointing out the prosecutorial misconduct that the prosecutors did in the ex parte meeting. And he pointed out like eight other examples that Miss Love has done f***ed up shit. State of Georgia, buying through Fonnie T. Willis, District Attorney of Atlanta Judicial Circuit, hereby responds in opposition to defendant Jeffrey Williams' motion to disqualify lead prosecutors Love and Hilton, filed on July 10th and July 18th. Despite the extraordinary nature of the request to disqualify the lead prosecutors in this case, defendant cites no facts and no law that authorizes the honorable court to disqualify either Love or Hilton. So this is gonna be interesting. She's saying there's no facts and no law, okay? It's a little questionable, but accordingly, the state respectfully moves this honorable court to deny defense motion to disqualify lead prosecutors in support of this response and the opposition defense motion to disqualify, where defendant seeks to examine the prosecutors on matters concerning which there are other sources of evidence available to defendant. The laws of Georgia and the facts of this case mandate this court's denial of defense motion to disqualify. Defendant asserts that lawyer Love and Hilton have made themselves critical witnesses in this case. When Love engaged with text messages with the witness, when Love and Hilton participated in a hearing in chambers with the witness and his lawyer regarding contempt proceedings against a witness. Defendant cites no legal authority in support of his position. Defendant, however, bears the heavy burden of proving that disqualification of the lead prosecutors in this case is warranted. See Lewis vs. State, instructing that it is the burden of the party seeking to disqualify counsel to prove the extraordinary remedy of disqualification is warranted. Defendant does not even attempt to meet this burden. Instead, he rests his pleadings on legally and factually unsupported assertions. So she cites a case where whichever party is seeking to disqualify the other has a burden to prove it. And here we go, starting out strong. She thinks the hearing in chambers was proper. Defendant asserts without support that Love and Hilton are disqualified as prosecutors in this case because they attended the hearing chambers that he believes himself entitled to have attended. Defendant argues that lead prosecutors in attendance at the hearing are disqualified under Georgia Rule of Professional Conduct 3.7a from further prosecuting the case because defendant now needs to examine them about the hearing and what took place. Defendant's argument is not grounded in law. The hearing in chambers was about an ongoing contempt proceeding against a witness who upon motion of the state had been compelled to testify but refused to do so. To be fair, a lot of it was explaining to Woody the difference between purging his contempt and perjury because <laughs> he didn't understand the difference but there was a few examples of straight up coercion I still truly believe them pointing out that he's going to be in jail for years on end is coercion because he was initially saying he wasn't going to testify then he gets scared into testifying because they're like we can keep you here for years until everyone else is tried on the case that's coercion the hearing was proper see king versus state ruling where king had complained that the trial court acted improperly by conducting a brief hearing outside his presence concerning the state's request for an order compelling witness to testify in king's trial and confirming the use and derivative use immunity that would apply to the compelled testimony the hearing appears not to have been part of the proceedings against king the georgia supreme court recognized that in king under circumstances closely resembling those here, that while King might have preferred that a key witness not be ordered to testify truthfully in his trial, there's nothing in Georgia law that would have permitted him to object to state's request for the order compelling the witness to testify in King's trial, or that would suggest that King's rights were in subject matter under consideration. So first off, she's saying there's nothing in Georgia law that supports this. Then she cites Williams v. State. On the contrary, the trial court was obliged to consider whether the testimony was necessary to the public interest, a matter which King had no standing to address, OCGA 24-9-28, an alleged bias on the witness's part was the proper subject of cross-examination, not grounds for denying the state's request for the order. See Mosher v. State. Holding the credibility of a witness ordered to testify under OCGA 24-9-28 is a jury question. Likewise, in Allen v. State, the Georgia Court of Appeals cited King in support of its holding that a defendant had no standing to contest the grant of immunity to a witness. So I think what she's clarifying here is that defense has no right to question them granting him immunity. Under both King and Allen, the June 10th in-chambers hearing was proper. and defendant had no standing to contest a hearing or to participate in it. Surely defendant does not expect that a proper hearing, which he had no standing to contest or to participate in, now somehow provides the defendant right to disqualification of the lead prosecutors who took part in the hearing. Such position makes no sense. <laughs> 
okay? I mean, it does seem like a critical stage of the trial though, where the star witness doesn't want to testify, has a meeting with the judge and prosecutors, <laughs> and suddenly wants to testify. He's a star witness who's testifying against the defendants. It seems like a critical stage of the trial to me. Disqualification of the prosecutors would constitute an abuse of this honorable court's discretion where other sources of evidence about what happened at the hearing are available to defendant and obviate any need of defendant for either prosecutor's testimony. So she's basically saying, Fuck you, you're not calling us as witnesses. Even if the hearing had not been proper, an even bigger hurdle barring disqualification of the prosecutors is the availability to defendant of other sources of evidence of what happened during the hearing. What are the other sources of evidence? They don't need to be called because the transcripts are available. With some exceptions, Rule 3.7a of the Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Georgia provides that a lawyer shall not act as an advocate at a trial in which the lawyer is likely to be necessary a witness of. However, the party moving for disqualification of a lawyer under the Rule 3.7 has the burden of showing that the lawyer is likely to be a necessary witness by demonstrating that the lawyer's testimony is relevant to disputed material questions of fact and that there is no other evidence available to prove those facts. And then she cites Clow vs. Rochello. The defendant cannot meet that burden. The hearing in chambers was taken down by the court reporter and transcribed. So I was right. It is about they have the transcript. They don't need to call anyone as witnesses. All parties now have the transcript of the hearing in chambers. The transcript clearly identifies those who were present, and that includes sheriff's deputies, investigators from the district attorney's office, the witness currently on stand, and the witness's attorney. Indeed, defendant will get to cross-examine the witness at issue himself. In Castell vs. Kemp, courts have properly refused to permit a prosecutor to be called as a defense witness unless there is compelling need. Trial courts are generally held to have discretion on whether to allow a party to call opposing counsel as a witness on the view that attempting to call opposing counsel to establish some fact that can be readily proved in a different manner should be discouraged. In Goodwin v. State, emphasis added, there's no compelling need for the lead prosecutors to testify, especially given that there are other examples of sources of information to establish what occurred at the hearing in chambers. All right, on to the next, disqualification of prosecutor love based on the exchange of text messages with the witness also would constitute an abuse of this honorable court discretion where other sources of evidence about the text messages are, are available to defendant and obviate any need by defendant loves testimony with ample sources of evidence about the text messages being available to defendant most notably by the witness itself whom defendant already examined at trial defendant asserts that these messages also require examination of love the law contradicts defendant's assertion citing shaft for state noting that speculation as to the content of an opposing counsel's testimony could not support a disqualification order georgia court of appeals held that the trial court abused its discretion when it disqualified trial counsel on the basis that the trial counsel's testimony was necessary where the victim made a statement in his presence but the statement had also been overheard by both the victim's mother and by the trial counsel's assistant who could testify to the circumstances surrounding the child's statement although shaft court agreed with the trial court's concern that trial counsel's testimony would be relevant to the jury for determining weight and credibility to assign the child's videotape for canchin so basically in this case testimony was not necessary to prove any fact related to the video or the circumstances surrounding the video any party could successfully move to disqualify Qualify an opposing attorney by simply averring that the opposing attorney might possess information that is damaging to the attorney's client's case and therefore that the attorney is likely to be a necessary witness in the moving party's case. To approve of such tactic would be opening the door to blatant misuse of a rule that already has a great potential for abuse. Emphasis added. Defendant proffers no information he seeks to gain from love that he cannot quite readily get has already gotten from another source. Disqualification of the lead prosecutor under these circumstances would constitute an abuse of this honorable court's discretion. So once again, they're just pointing out that they don't need to call them as witnesses because they have other sources to get information from. Defendant's reference to the former trial judge has no bearing on defense motion to disqualify. Although it's not necessary for the present motion, Williams asserts that he wants to call as a witness the chief judge who recently presided over the trial. The state submits that the chief judge is not a necessary witness for the same reason that the lead prosecutors are not necessary witnesses. Moreover, while no point did chief judge comment on the evidence before this jury, it appears the defendant's primary purpose in calling the chief judge would be to ask him to do just that. Although the defendant has not requested permission to do that yet, the state submits the court should deny such request when and if it is made. So since the judge didn't comment on the evidence, he shouldn't be called at trial is what they're saying. There's no evidence to authorize disqualification of the lead prosecutors under the two only generally recognized grounds for disqualification of a prosecutor in Georgia, conflict of interest, and forensic misconduct. And defendant does not even purport to request relief on these grounds. Defendant does not allege, nor does there exist evidence in this case, suggesting that either prosecutor in this case should be disqualified under the two only generally recognized grounds for disqualification of a prosecutor in Georgia. So these are the only two grounds right here. An actual conflict of interest exists or a prosecutor is engaged in forensic misconduct. See Reed v. State, Williams v. State. So that's the only two grounds to disqualify them? I mean, if that's true, they shouldn't be disqualified. There's not really a conflict of interest and they haven't engaged in any forensic misconduct, but they did coerce someone to testify. <laughs> 
I don't know. Citing McGlynn v. State, Georgia Court of Appeals recognized that a trial court considering a defense motion to disqualify an elected district attorney or her staff based on alleged misconduct must hold those who allege misconduct to a high standard of proof. Emphasis added again. <laughs> Even assuming for the sake of argument that the allegations set forth in the defense motion were true, those allegations fail to meet the high standard required to disqualify two lead prosecutors from an ongoing and well-advanced criminal trial. The extraordinary relief defendant William seeks is simply unwarranted and his motion should be denied without any further proceedings. Unwarranted and should be denied. Conclusion. For the reason stated above, it would be an egregious abuse of this honorable court's discretion to disqualify Love and Hilton based solely on the assertions advanced in defense motion, especially where there's no evidence of any ground authorizing either prosecutor prosecutor's disqualification. This court should not abuse its discretion by disqualifying the prosecutor, especially where the June 10th hearing about which the defendants incessantly complains was proper. <laughs> God, I hate Bonnie Willis. I'm gonna be honest, boys. She just got that attitude. Bonnie Willis and Miss Love seem like they'd be great friends. And talking about other sources of information so he doesn't need to call them at trial. Defendants' efforts to forestall the conclusion of the longest trial in Georgia history by seeking to disqualify lead prosecutors should be immediately stopped. This Abel court should deny defense motion to disqualify lead prosecutors. It's the defendants' efforts to forestall? Didn't two of your prosecutors coerce someone to testify? And so did a trial judge? I'm confused here. Who's at fault? What? If y'all never had the secret ex parte meeting, none of this would have happened. Point blank and period. So that's kind of, that's some delusion right there from Fonnie Willis, to be honest. The last statement. Reading some tweets right here. This lady says there's no way the ex parte hearing was proper. Yeah, right. That's why every attorney in a hundred mile radius was at the court the day it was revealed. Because clearly it was improper. So Doug Weinstein went on a live stream today and talks about this. So I have to watch it. We have a right to be present at all critical stages of this trial. And when you have got the key witness for possibly the entire case the state is bringing, certainly for the um, murder of Donovan Thomas. When you have that person and he has refused to testify and he has been jailed for contempt and now you are twisting his arm, hotboxing him, you are bullying him into changing his mind really involuntarily. That's a critical stage by any measure of the law and we should have been present. Mr. Kendrick's constitutional rights were violated by us not being present. The actions of the judge were improper in coercing Kendrick to testify. That's another constitutional violation. The prosecutors had to know that what they were doing was improper. They had to know that this would be our response. And this was the intended response of the state. What I have an issue with is you thinking that you can speak to the press and you're the state, you are the all powerful state, but I cannot speak to the press. Yeah, that's dope. It's hypocritical. So it was good for Brian Stowe to point that out. That's uh, hypocritical. So now here's his response on what I read earlier. Were Fani or Fanny? Is it Fani or Fanny? I thought it was Fani. Said everything was proper. I'm not gonna comment too much on this because it's Brian's motion. Yeah. But I will say simply put, well, first of all, let me make a comment. This same DA's office tried to disqualify Brian Steele uh, before this, at, at the beginning of all this right, case. All right, let me pause you. What was the basis? I, I, I cannot know recall. Saying that. I cannot recall. Uh -huh. um, they tried to disqualify Brian Steele, I believe because he was representing someone else in the case or something or some bull like that. It wasn't anything crazy. Before the trial started. Miss Love and Miss Hilton and Chief Judge Glendale are witnesses with respect to what happened in the coercion of Kenneth Copeland. As you said, it's black letter law that you cannot be a party to a lawsuit and a witness in the lawsuit. It's not appropriate to have the, ju the jury judging the credibility of the prosecutor on the stand. Having not read Brian's motion, having not read the state's response, just from my perspective, it's a very simple call. They are witnesses, we're gonna to need to call them. And let me tell you what else is gonna happen. During cross-examination of Kenneth Copeland, Miss Hilton's name is gonna come up, Miss Love's name is gonna come up, Chief Judge Glanville's name is gonna come up. There, there are a lot of issues here. That is gonna be a major issue. How is this trial gonna go on? I'm still just shocked that they're even trying to <laughs> make this trial go on. She cites a case from 2000 King versus State ruling that where King had complained that the trial court acted improperly by conducting a brief hearing outside his presence concerning the state's request for an order to compel the witness to testify. You know, they ruled that was proper. But first of all, I read that King case and I've seen this same argument made by these prosecutors before. They're saying that, that this is proper because in the King case, there was a something that was very brief that happened that was limited to conferring use and derivative use immunity on the witness. But that's not what happened in this case. This was not a, he had already been granted immunity. This was not a brief discussion about the nature and the extent of that immunity. This was a judge bringing out the Georgia law book and reading him the Georgia code and threatening him to keep him in jail essentially indefinitely. And there was other things that went on. So just on the facts alone, I can tell you that their, their site to this King business is garbage and it's nonsense. I mean, clearly they can't find case law to support their position that this was proper. So both of them saying citing the King case is bullshit. Wanted to object to the order compelling his testimony um, under immunity. That's not what y'all were doing. Y'all weren't objecting to the grant of immunity. At this point, you're objecting to the ex parte uh, full-blown hearing. And I was confused about that too. I, I was like, wait, so they're just pointing out that they can't 
object to him having immunity why does that really matter and i just i mean this is just one of those things that blows my mind i can't wrap my head around anyone thinking that this ex parte was in any way proper it was not a hearing on whether to grant the immunity that had already been done i don't think you can find an attorney outside the fulton county da's office that thinks <laughs> that that was proper next tuesday is going to be fireworks in court to say the least it might be the most interesting day of the trial so far so i'll try to get the video up the same day i'm going to try to do that for you guys so yeah hit subscribe join the channel membership it's only 10 cents per day i really appreciate the support love you guys peace out Diamond.